Before time as we know it, before the existence of space itself, there was, what? Our entire cosmic story, the grand narrative of existence, begins with a single, incomprehensible moment. 14 billion years ago, something truly impossible happened. Imagine everything you've ever known, every person, every planet, every star in the sky, and every one of the two trillion galaxies we can observe, all of it, compressed into a single point of infinite density and unimaginable heat, a singularity smaller than the period at the end of this sentence. This wasn't an explosion space, it was the violent, brilliant explosion space itself. For decades, this was the accepted story of creation, the absolute beginning, chapter one of the universe. But modern physics has a deep-seated problem with beginnings. The laws of nature, the very equations we use to describe reality, break down completely at the singularity. It's a mathematical dead end, a point where our science screams error. This has led the world's most brilliant minds to a radical and thrilling conclusion. The Big Bang wasn't the start of everything, it was just the start of everything. So, what came before? Prepare to journey with us into the before time. We're about to explore the ekparotic universe, a radical idea from string theory where our reality was born from the cataclysmic collision of two higher dimensional membranes, or brains. We'll dive deep into the mind-bending concept of black hole cosmology, which suggests that every black hole could be a gateway, a seed for a new universe and we'll investigate the Big Bounce, a theory from loop quantum gravity, where the universe didn't begin from a singularity, but instead bounced back from the collapse of a previous one, making time itself an eternal loop. Each of these theories offers a different, stunning answer to the ultimate question. This isn't just a philosophical thought experiment, this is the absolute frontier of human knowledge, pushing the boundaries of what we thought was possible. If you're ready to have your perception of existence fundamentally challenged and explore the hard science behind these incredible ideas, then make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to join our community of cosmic explorers. This journey will change how you see everything. Prepare yourselves, we begin. Picture this. You're trying to divide by zero on a calculator and it just says error. It's a mathematical dead end, a question with no valid answer in the rules of arithmetic. That's almost exactly what happens when physicists try to use their most powerful equations to understand the very first moment of the Big Bang. The universe, it seems, began with a cosmic error message. For physicists, an answer of infinity isn't a solution. It's a glaring sign that the theory you're using has been pushed beyond its limits and has broken down. It's a mathematical cry for help, pointing to a deeper, unknown physics. We call it the singularity problem, and it's been driving scientists crazy for decades. This isn't just a trivial puzzle, it represents the single greatest chasm in modern physics. The problem lies at the intersection of our two most successful descriptions of reality, general relativity, the theory of the very large like stars and galaxies and quantum mechanics, the theory of the very small like atoms and particles. At the dawn of time, the entire universe was incredibly massive and yet infinitesimally small, a place where both theories must apply, but when we try to use them together, they clash, giving us nonsensical answers. According to our best theories, if you rewind the universe like a movie playing backwards, everything gets smaller and smaller until it reaches a point of infinite density and infinite temperature. We watch as galaxies rush back together, stars deconstruct into incandescent clouds of gas, and all matter and energy in the cosmos are forced into a space that keeps shrinking, the pressure and temperature skyrocket beyond any scale we can imagine. This endpoint, this singularity, is where our understanding shatters. Think of it like trying to cram every person on Earth into a space the size of a pinhead. It doesn't work. Now, amplify that impossibility. Don't just imagine people. Imagine every star, every planet, every black hole and every speck of dust in the entire observable universe, all crushed together into a volume smaller than a single proton. The very idea is a physical absurdity. Einstein's general relativity, which beautifully describes gravity as the curvature of a smooth, continuous fabric of space-time starts throwing up its hands and saying, I quit. It's a classical theory, not built for the bizarre rules of the quantum world. At the scale of the singularity, space-time itself would no longer be smooth. It would be a roiling, chaotic sea of quantum foam where space and time fluctuate violently and lose their familiar meaning. General relativity simply can't handle this reality. The temperature at this moment would have been 10 million trillion trillion degrees, a value known as the Planck temperature. This is the theoretical upper limit of heat. 
At this temperature, the four fundamental forces of nature, gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear forces would have melted together into a single primordial superforce. The very distinction between matter and energy would dissolve. It's a state so alien, our physics breaks just trying to describe it. To put it in perspective, that's hot enough to make the core of the sun look like an ice cube. Welcome to the smallest possible scale of reality, where everything you think you know about space and time falls apart. Imagine zooming into the surface of a calm lake. At distances smaller than 10 to the minus 35 meters, space isn't smooth like we imagine. It's bubbling and churning like a pot of boiling water. Scientists call this the quantum foam. At the quantum foam level, pairs of particles spontaneously pop into existence and then annihilate each other in less than 10 to the minus 43 seconds. Picture a balloon being inflated, but instead of growing steadily, it suddenly explodes from the size of a marble to the size of a basketball in less time than it takes light to cross a single atom. What if the Big Bang wasn't a beginning, but a bounce? Scientists are discovering that our universe might be caught in an eternal cycle of expansion and contraction, where each Big Bang is actually the rebound from a previous cosmic collapse. Think of it like a cosmic washing machine that cleans and resets the universe every few trillion years. Picture two vast sheets of space-time hurtling toward each other through a higher dimension that we can't see. Think of it like two enormous soap bubbles floating toward each other in a bathtub. Our universe has a secret hidden beyond the three dimensions of space that we experience every day. Think of these extra dimensions like a garden hose viewed from far away. String theory suggests that the fundamental building blocks of reality aren't particles at all, but tiny vibrating strings existing in a space with nine dimensions plus time. To understand one of the most mind-bending ideas in cosmology, we first have to rewind the clock on our own universe, back to the very first sliver of a second after the Big Bang. In this fleeting moment, the universe underwent a period of incredible exponential growth called inflation. It was this hyper-expansion that smoothed out the cosmos and laid the groundwork for the galaxies we see today. But what if that process never truly stopped? This is the core of the theory of eternal inflation. Imagine a cosmic factory that never shuts down, perpetually churning out new Big Bangs. A useful though simplified analogy is a pot of boiling water. The water itself represents a high-energy vacuum state, an inflaton field, that is constantly expanding at a blistering pace. But this field is unstable. At random points, quantum fluctuations can cause a patch of this field to decay, to drop to a lower energy state. When that happens, a bubble forms. That bubble is an entire universe complete with its own Big Bang and its own destiny, and the water around it continues to expand making more room for more bubbles forever. In this eternally inflating multiverse, every possible universe that can exist does exist. This isn't just a collection of identical copies. String theory suggests a landscape of possibilities, with 10 to the 500 different ways the laws of physics could settle. Each bubble universe that forms rolls down into one of these valleys, adopting a unique set of physical laws. The consequences are staggering. There are universes where the force of gravity is twice as strong as in ours, crushing any potential for large stars or galaxies before they can form. Universes where the electromagnetic force is weaker, meaning atoms could never hold together. Universes with four spatial dimensions instead of three. Universes where stars burn a brilliant cold blue instead of a warm yellow. Our universe, with its finely tuned constants that allow for stars, planets, and ultimately life, is just one lucky bubble in an infinite cosmic ocean. We didn't win a special cosmic lottery. In an infinite system, our number was simply bound to come up eventually. But there's another, equally compelling theory for how universes might be born. It starts not at the beginning of time, but with the death of a giant star. What if our entire universe exists inside a black hole? This idea, known as cosmological natural selection and championed by physicist Lee Smolin, proposes a fascinating link between the largest and smallest scales. When a truly massive star exhausts its fuel, its core collapses under immense gravity forming a black hole. At the heart of that black hole is a singularity, a point of supposedly infinite density, a concept that physicists find deeply problematic. But what if the collapse doesn't just end there? What if the matter, compressed to an unimaginable degree, bounces and triggers the creation of an entirely new expanding region of space-time, hidden from the parent universe behind the event horizon. In this scenario, the Big Bang wasn't a beginning from nothing but a transformation of matter and energy from a universe that came before. 
If our universe was born inside a black hole, then that black hole must exist in a larger parent universe. And that parent universe was likely born from a black hole in a grandparent universe. It's black holes all the way up, an infinite hierarchy of nested realities. This theory comes with a stunning twist, a form of cosmic evolution. Smolin proposed that each time a new universe is created, its fundamental physical constants might change slightly, like a genetic mutation. Now consider this, which universes will be most successful at reproducing? The ones that create the most black holes. This creates a cosmic natural selection, favoring universes whose laws are optimized for producing massive stars that will in turn, create more black holes. And here's the beautiful part. The very conditions needed for abundant black hole production such as the plentiful formation of carbon and oxygen in stellar cores, are also the conditions necessary for complex chemistry and life as we know it. Our existence might be a byproduct of a cosmos that is simply good at making more of itself. Whether through the endless bubbling of an inflating vacuum or the generational cascade of black holes, these theories paint a picture of reality that is vastly larger and more complex than we ever imagined. Every black hole in our own universe, the supermassive giants at the hearts of galaxies, the millions of smaller ones roaming the void, might not be an endpoint but a beginning. Each one could be a seed, containing its own interior cosmos, a complete reality with its own unique physics, its own story, and its own potential for complexity and life. Our entire cosmic horizon, all the billions of light years we can see, may be just a single infinitesimal point within an endless interconnected cosmic ecosystem.